Okay, we've read quite a few fairy tales, but our next couple of read-alouds read will be tall tales. Tall tales are a type of folk tale, which is a type of fiction. Fiction means that it's something that's made up and the events of the story didn't actually happen in real life. So a fairy tale is another type of fiction. Tall tales are a different type. Tall tales were first told orally many, many years ago and were later written down. Tall tales are usually humorous. That means that they're kind of funny. And they sometimes are about real life heroes of the American frontier during the 1800s. When America was first started, it was made up of what we call the 13 original colonies. At first, there were only 13 states in America. You can see the 13 original colonies in red on this map. The rest of America, the part that's shown in blue, was unsettled and considered wild. This was the American frontier, where many of our tall tales will take place. The character in today's tall tale was named Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan was a famous lumberjack or logger. Paul Bunyan is a fictional character and much of what you hear about him today will be exaggeration. Exaggeration is an important characteristic of all tall tales. But that's kind of a big word, exaggeration. An exaggeration is an overstatement of the truth. So if you are feeling really hungry and you tell your mom, mom, I'm starving. That's probably an exaggeration. You're not actually starving. Or sometimes when people go fishing and they tell their family about the fish that they caught, they'll exaggerate how big it was. They'll say it was bigger than the whole boat. But that's probably an exaggeration. As we read today, keep an eye out for exaggerations. Exaggeration in a tall tale usually makes the character seem larger than life. He or she is always bigger, stronger, smarter, and faster than regular people. Before we read our story, let's go over some of our vocabulary words. Our first one is admiration. If you have admiration for someone or something, that means that you have a feeling of deep respect and liking or wonder for that person or thing. The American people have a great deal of admiration for the first astronauts who, were, who walked on the moon. See if you can think of someone that you have admiration for. Colossal. Colossal means unbelievably large or great. So Clifford, the big red dog, is colossal compared to other dogs. Inseparable. Inseparable means always together or unable to be separated. Me and my sister during the summer when we were little were always inseparable. We were always playing together. Our last word is frontier and we've already talked about that one a little bit. Remember, the frontier was the unsettled part of the American West. Even as a baby, Paul Bunyan was mighty big. How big? Well, he was so big that his parents had to use a covered wagon for his cradle. As you might imagine, young Paul Bunyan had a big appetite. He gobbled up five barrels of porridge a day and his parents had to milk four dozen cows every morning and night just to keep his baby bottle filled. Do you really think he ate all of that porridge and drank all of that milk? Or do you think that might be an exaggeration? Paul was so big, it caused some problems in the little town in Maine where he grew up. When he sneezed, he blew the birds from Maine to California. When he snored, the neighbors ran out of their houses hollering, earthquake, earthquake. After that, Paul's father thought it might be better if Paul didn't sleep in the town. He built a cot on a large raft for Paul 
and floated it off the coast. Paul slept on the raft for a few nights, but the floating cot didn't work out. When Paul turned over in his sleep, he created gigantic waves that knocked down houses along the coast. Eventually, Paul's father decided that the East Coast was just too small for Paul Bunyan. The only sensible thing to do was move out west. So the Bunyan family moved to Minnesota. Why do you think he thought it would be better in the west? Think back to the map we saw at the beginning. Was there more room in the western frontier? In those days, Minnesota was full of logging camps, sawmills, and lumberjacks. A lumberjack is someone who cuts down trees. The sawmill is where the trees are turned into boards. People use the wood from trees to build houses and to make many other things. Americans were moving west and building the country. They had to cut down a lot of trees to make their homes, not to mention their schools, churches, boats, and furniture. When he grew up, Paul Bunyan went to work as a lumberjack, and what a lumberjack he proved to be. He made himself a giant axe with a handle carved out of a full-grown hickory tree. He could bring down a giant tree with a single swing of his axe. Hmm, that sounds like that might be an exaggeration to me. As the tree tipped over, he would yell, Timber! So the other lumberjacks had time to get out of the way. Everyone looked up to Paul Bunyan, way up. The other lumberjacks were full of admiration for him. So remember, that means that they thought very highly of him. The bosses were grateful for the amazing amount of work that he could do in a single day. Paul had a big heart too, but one thing he always wished for was a true friend. There simply wasn't anybody else his size who could be his friend. That all changed during the winter of the big blue snow. It was called the winter of the big blue snow because it was so cold that everyone shivered and turned blue. Even the snow shivered and turned blue. Hmm, does that sound like something that could really happen, or does that sound like an exaggeration? One day, as Paul made his way through the blue snowdrifts, he heard a muffled whimper. So if the whimper's muffled, that means that he can't hear it very well. So if I'm talking to you right now, you can hear me pretty clearly, but if I put my hand over my mouth, mm -hmm. You can't hear that as well. It's more muffled. Paul followed the noise until he saw two big, blue, furry things sticking up out of the snow. He reached down and he gave a pull. Take a minute to guess. What do you think he's going to pull out of the snow? It turned out that the two big blue furry things were two big blue ears. And connected to the big blue ears was a giant blue baby ox. Paul exclaimed, the poor little fellow is half frozen. Paul carried the blue ox home, wrapped him in blankets, and fed him. The baby ox was so content that he took a long nap in Paul's big strong arms. When he woke up, he looked up at Paul, and do you know what he said? Mama, Mama. Then he gave Paul a big, slobbery lick on the face. Paul laughed and said, Babe, we're going to be great friends. And they were. In fact, Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox were soon inseparable. Everywhere Paul went, Babe went too. The two of them worked together in the lumber camps. Paul chopped down the trees, then Babe hauled them to the river and dropped them in so they could float downstream to a sawmill. Remember that in order for settlers to farm new land, they sometimes had to prepare it for growing crops and building homes. They often did this by clearing the trees away from the land. Together, Paul and Babe did the work of a hundred men. Hmm, what about that one? Do you think that one's an exaggeration too? The lumber company figured the best way to keep Paul Bunyan happy was through his stomach. 
so they hired a special cook to feed Paul and Babe. The cook's name was Sourdough Sam. Sourdough is a type of bread. But Sourdough Sam was known for the giant flapjacks that he cooked in the world's biggest frying pan. Flapjacks are another name for pancakes. The colossal pan sat on an enormous cast iron frame. Remember, colossal means that it's huge. Every morning, Sourdough Sam would build a raging forest fire underneath the pan. Then he would call for his two helpers, Lars Larson and Pete Peterson. Lars and Pete would grease up the pan by tying slabs of bacon to their feet and skating back and forth across the sizzling pan. Hmm, if they're skating around on bacon to grease a pan, does that sound like something that could actually happen or do you think it might be an exaggeration? Then Sourdough Sam would make a giant stack of pancakes for Paul and an even larger stack for Babe. Thanks to Sourdough Sam and his overgrown flapjacks, Babe eventually grew to be even bigger than Paul. He was so big that if you were standing at his front legs, you had to use a telescope to see all the way to his back legs. In fact, he was so heavy that his footprints filled up with water and turned into lakes. In fact, there are more than 10,000 lakes in Minnesota today and most of them were created by Babe the Blue Ox back in the frontier days. Hmm, Babe making lakes out of his footprints sounds like it might be what? Paul and Babe helped the lumberjacks solve all sorts of problems. Once there was a river that was full of twists and turns. Sometimes the trees would get stuck in the turns and never make it downstream to the sawmill. But Paul Bunyan thought of a way to fix that. He went to one end of the river and sent Babe to the other end. Paul grabbed the river and pulled in one direction. Babe pulled the other end in the opposite direction. Then, snap! Just like that, all of the kinks were pulled out and the river was as straight as an axe handle. Of course, this tightening operation left the river a good deal longer than it had been before, and there was a lot of extra water lying around. Paul and Babe worked together to dig five big holes to hold all of that extra water. Nowadays, these are called the Great Lakes. Do you think Paul Bunyan actually created the Great Lakes? Or do you think that might be another example of an ex exaggeration? One day, the logging bosses got to talking. One of them said that the United States was a fine country to be sure, but it could still stand a little improvement. For one thing, it could use a few more rivers. And what it really needed was a big river running right down the middle of the country, all the way from Minnesota down to New Orleans. If we had a river like that, the man said, we could ship timber down to New Orleans and all around the world. Paul Bunyan happened to overhear this conversation. He told the bosses he would see what he could do. He hitched up Babe and they started plowing south. As they plowed, they threw a great mound of dirt and rocks to the right and a smaller mound to the left. On the right side, they made the Rocky Mountains and on the left side, they made the Appalachian Mountains. Paul Bunyan and Babe didn't stop until they had, the, they had plowed a channel all the way south to the Gulf of Mexico. And the river that flows in that channel nowadays, that's what we call the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River was a very important means of transportation in frontier days, and it still is today. From that day on, Paul and Babe went around the country using their size and strength to help anyone who needed it. Later, they dug the Grand Canyon as they made their way to the west coast of California. And when the wind blows just right from the west, you can still smell those infamous colossal pancakes cooking on the frontier. That tall tale had a lot of exaggerations about places that Paul Bunyan created. Let's talk about a couple of them.
Paul Bunyan grew up in Minnesota. Minnesota is shown on our map where that purple square is. A lot of the Great Lakes that he created with the leftover water from the Mississippi are in Minnesota. Our story also claimed that he created the Mississippi River itself. The Mississippi River is a huge river that stretches all the way from the North United States to the South. It cuts across the whole country. This is shown on our map by that blue circle. There's a picture of the Mississippi River there too, so you can see how big it really is. That tall tale also claimed that Paul Bunyan created both the Appalachian Mountains in the eastern United States, shown by the green circle on our map, and the Rocky Mountains in the western part of the United States, shown by the yellow line on our map. I've got some pictures of those mountain ranges for you to look at too. Some of you may have seen the Rocky Mountains as they go through Utah. Lastly, our story exaggerated that Paul Bunyan created the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is shown by this yellow line on our map that goes through Arizona and New Mexico. The Grand Canyon is a huge path caused by, marked by a river. There's a picture of that one as well for you to look at. All right, friends. Now that we've talked a little bit about the tall tale that we read today, I have a few questions about it for you. My first question is who is our tall tale, tall tale, oof, excuse me, who is our tall tale about today? What was the main character's name? You got it, it was Paul Bunyan. What about Paul Bunyan, what about that story made Paul Bunyan seem larger than life? See if you can think of some examples. There were a lot of examples in today's story. Paul Bunyan was bigger and stronger than most people. When he was a baby, it said that his parents had to milk four cows and he ate five barrels of porridge every morning. It also said that he could take down a tree with a single swing of his axe. That makes him seem larger than life to me, for sure. There's also lots of examples of exaggeration in the tale of Paul Bunyan. See if you can think of, an, of a couple examples of exaggeration that were in that story. There are lots and lots of examples that you could have chosen from. When Paul was a baby, when he rolled over in his sleep, it said that our story said that it caused huge waves. It also said that when he snored, people thought there was an earthquake, it was so loud. He ate giant, giant flapjacks that people had to grease the pan by strapping bacon to their feet and skating across it. I think those are all pretty good examples of exaggeration. You might have thought of different ones. There were a lot in there. What are some things in that story? There's lots in that story that couldn't happen in real life. Some things that couldn't happen in real life is how big Paul Bunyan was and how big the pan they used to make those flapjacks. And oxes can't be blue. But what are some things in that story that could actually happen in real life? You got it. In real life, people can take care of ox, of a ox calf. Not ones as big as it said babe was, but that the taking care of animals is a thing that can happen. People can move across the country. People can build homes. And lumberjack, being a lumberjack, is a real job that people can have. Right. Was this tell fiction or non-fiction? What do you think? There is a hint right here on my chart. This tale is, was, 
fictional. Let's look at our other characteristics of tall tales. Tall tales usually take place on the American frontier, and parts of this one did. Tall tales are usually humorous or have lots of funny things in them. I think there are lots of funny, funny parts to Paul Bunyan's story. Tall tales include exaggeration. Paul Bunyan had a lot of exaggeration in it. And tall tales feature larger than life characters. Paul Bunyan is definitely larger than life. All right, one last question before we move on to our assignment. I want you to think about all of the exaggerations that you remember from today's read aloud. I want you to pick one and turn and tell the person that's sitting next to you how you would change it if you were retelling the story. How would you change one of those exaggerations? All right, my friends, I'm going to need you now to open up the PDF that goes along with this lesson. On that PDF, there is a chart that has a bunch of names listed at the top. Those are the people that we're going to be learning about in all of our read alouds about tall tales. The first one has Paul Bunyan's name. On the side, going down the side, there is a list of characteristics that you typically find in tall tales. Their list includes more than mine does. We're going to go through that and fill out examples of those tall tale characteristics from Paul Bunyan. I'm going to jump onto my computers and show you my screen so you can see exactly what to do. All right, when you get that PDF open in Cami, it should look like this. You'll notice that our boxes on our chart are pretty small. So we're going to use our text box and you might want to change the font size. It has the font size set to 12, but you'll probably want it at 10 or 11. So you can fit your sentences in, the, in these squares. Today, we read about Paul Bunyan. We haven't read about Pecos Bill, John Henry, or Casey Jones yet. So we are only going to fill in this first column under his name. Our first characteristic of tall tales is amazing childhood. Take a minute to see if you can think of an example of something amazing about Paul Bunyan's childhood. I remember something that I think was amazing was that Paul Bunyan had to use a covered wagon. Oh. There we go. As a cradle. I'm going to move my box over. And I'm going to make it fit right here in this section. There are a lot of other examples from his childhood that you could use. You could have said that when he was a baby, when he rolled over in his sleep, he created huge waves. And when he snored, his neighbors thought it was an earthquake because it was so loud and powerful. What about creations or inventions? Is there something amazing that Paul Bunyan created or invented? See if you can think of an example. I remember that Paul Bunyan created some amazing things in nature. According to our story, he created the Grand Canyon and the Great Lakes. All right, what about amazing adventures? See if you can think of an example of an amazing adventure that Paul Bunyan went on in our story.
one of my favorite examples was that Paul Bunyan and Babe straightened out the Mississippi River. Oop, I can't see what I'm typing over that line. There we go. And I'm going to fix it so it fits in our section. All right, humor. What was something humorous that happened in our story? I think my favorite humor, humorous part of that story was that Paul Bunyan ate huge flapjacks. These flapjacks were made in a pan so big that in order to grease it, people had to strap bacon on their feet and skate around inside of it. All right, and last but not least is exaggerations. There were lots of exaggerations in Paul Bunyan. See if you can think of an example. The exaggeration I'm going to write was that Paul Bunyan was so strong, he could take down a tree with just one swing. You don't have to write that example. You can choose any example of exaggeration from the story that you would like. All right, my friends, when you are done filling out the Paul Bunyan column of our chart, you're going to come up to the turn in button and turn it in. Okay, friends, before we go, I wanna talk about nouns for a little bit. So remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing. When we are talking about one person, place, or thing, it is called a singular noun. Singular means there's just one. But if we're talking about more than one of something, we call it a plural noun. Plural means two or more. So if I am holding one pencil, that is a singular noun. But if I pick up two more, and I'm now holding three pencils, pencils is a plural noun. One girl is a singular noun, but girls is a plural noun. Most nouns become plural by adding an S or Z sound. One cat, two cats, or one dog, two dogs. Sometimes the S sound is added. If the word already ends in an S, a Z, a CH, or a SH sound. So one kiss would become two kisses. Let's see, let's try a couple more. What about box? One box would be four boxes. Some nouns don't follow those rules though. We call them irregular plural nouns. That means instead of adding an S or an ES at the end, we change the whole word. So if I have more than one foot, instead of saying I have two foots, I would say I have two feet. Instead of one tooth, I have 30 teeth. One man is five men. Pay attention as you hear these irregular noun, plural nouns. The more you hear them and notice them, the more you'll be able to remember them and use them.